Our lesson today is on subtracting integers. You'll find that once you know the rule for subtracting, it will be just as easy as adding. The platform on a diving board is three meters high. The actions of a diver climbing up to the diving board platform and diving one meter below the water's surface are shown on the vertical number line to the right. So to explain this number line, the three represents the diving board. So from the zero, the diver comes up three meters. He's going to dive off that diving board and he's going to land one meter under the water. The zero represents where the water is at. We can represent this in a subtraction sentence by saying three minus four equals negative one. We can look at our number line to prove that. So the diver climbed up three meters. We don't want to keep going up because he's diving off and going the other direction, which is why it's a subtraction problem and not an addition problem. So when that diver dives off, he goes four meters down to get to that negative one. Let's look at that same problem again. There is another way to solve this problem. We can change our subtraction problem to an addition problem. Remember when we were learning how to divide fractions? We decided to switch those division problems to multiplication by keeping the first fraction, flipping the second fraction, and then putting our multiplication in between. These rules are very similar. Let's write them down. So we are going to keep the first So keep the first, and then we are going to change the second. So we're changing the second number. And then we're going to put our addition sign in the middle instead of our subtraction sign. So we're going to keep the first number, change the second number, and then we will switch the subtraction sign to an addition sign. We're going to do an example so you can see what I mean. So we are going to take that same problem and apply that rule. So I have 3 minus 4 equals negative 1. That is what we saw in our vertical number line. Okay, we are going to apply that rule. So we are going to keep the first number. We're going to change the second number. Notice right now that that is a positive 4. It's positive 3, subtract positive 4. We are going to write the opposite of positive 4. The opposite of positive 4 is negative 4. So basically, if the number was positive before, we change it to a negative. If it was negative, we're going to switch it to a positive. Our last step said that we needed to switch the subtraction sign to an addition sign. So we just rewrote our subtraction problem of 3 minus 4 equals negative 1 to 3 plus negative 4 and let's just check on our number line and make sure that these do equal the same thing. So I'm going to make a horizontal number line. Let's start at 0. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and switch colors here. So starting at 0, we are going to jump to our 3. From there, we are adding a negative 4. Whenever you add a negative, you are moving to the left. So I'm going to go this way, four spaces. So notice I was here. I went one, two, three, four spaces, and this is going to be my final answer. 
So 3 plus negative 4 equals negative 1. Let's try another problem using that rule. Let's try 2 subtract negative 1. Okay, so using our rule, it says keep the first number the same. So I'm going to keep my positive 2 a positive 2. I'm going to change my second number. Notice my second number is a negative 1. Since it's a negative 1, the opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. Instead of our subtraction sign, we are now going to have an addition sign. So now I'm just left with positive 2 plus positive 1, which this one's easy, just equals positive 3. Now let's look at why that works. Let's take a second and see why that rule works. If I had negative 1 minus 3, let's just try that on a number line really quick negative 1 minus 3. So I'm going to make my number line. Switch colors here and I'm going to start at the 0 and go to my negative 1. So there is my starting point, negative 1. Okay, when we are subtracting we like to think that we are always moving to the left on the number line because we should be getting a smaller number. If that second number is not a negative number, that is true. We will just keep on going. So in this case, I'm going to actually need one more number here. I'm going to keep on going three more spaces. So there's one, two, three. And that's going to put me at negative four. Let's turn around and switch that to an addition problem just so we can check our work and make sure that that is correct. If I switch that, I would keep my negative one, change my positive three to a negative three, and then switch my subtraction sign to an addition sign. I could either do this on the number line, or I could also just use my rule and I could see that I have the same sign, so I just add straight across and I keep my sign. So this equals negative four, and this also equals negative four. A way I like to remember the rule is I like to say keep, change, change, just like we did with the fractions, or you can also say add the opposite. So you always know you keep the first one the same and then you add the opposite of the second number. Let's try another example just to prove that that addition rule will work. Let's try positive 2 subtract a negative 1. Okay, I'm going to make a number line here. So I have a zero, put some positive numbers on here, and let's also put some negative numbers on here. Okay, so we're going to start at our zero, and then we are going to go to our first number, which is the two. Let's use some BSU colors here. So we start at zero, we go to our positive two. Typically, we would be going to the left because it's a subtraction. But like I said on the other one, whenever the second number is a negative, we actually have to switch directions. So instead of going to the left, in this case, we are actually going to be going to the right. So let me pick a different color here. So we're going to start at that 2, and instead of going left 1, we are actually going to continue and go right one more spot. So our answer here is going to be a positive 3. Let's do that exact same problem and use that rule like we did before so you can see how much easier it is 
if you know the rule. That way you don't have to think about whether or not you're changing direction on the number line. So let's keep the first one and let's use that rule add the opposite. So I'm going to add the opposite of negative 1 is positive 1 and I switch 2 subtract negative 1 which is kind of a complicated problem into something that I've learned a long time ago. 2 plus a positive 1 which just equals positive 3. Okay, let's have you guys try one. So let's try negative 2 subtract negative 3. So you could think about a number line, start at 0, go to negative 2. You would know that originally you would be going to the left, but since I bumped into that negative as my second number, I switched directions and I'm actually going to the right. So instead of getting confused, I want you to pause the video and I want you to try and switch that subtraction to addition and then solve. Now that you pause the video and you have your final answer, let's check our work. So let's keep the first number. We could say keep and then add the opposite or we can say keep change change. So I'm going to change that to an addition sign. The opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. Remember if it was, once was negative, it's now positive. If it was positive, it's now going to be negative. From here, we can either use our number line to solve this problem or we can use the rules that we learned to solve this problem. Let's use our rules in this case. So I have a negative 2 plus 3. I have two different signs, so what I'm really doing is I am subtracting 3 minus 2. Notice that I use both whole numbers. I am using their absolute value. The absolute value means how far is that number from zero. Absolute value is always positive because you always measure distance in a positive number. You never me measure distance in a negative number. So 3, the absolute va value of 3 is just 3. The absolute value of negative 2 is just 2 because it is two spaces away from 0. So I'm going to take that 3 minus 2 and get my 1. From there, I can just look and see what my sign is going to be. I want to look and see which one has the bigger absolute value. So which one is further away from 0? Is negative 2 further away from 0 or is positive 3? In this case, the positive 3 is further away from 0. So our answer is just that positive 1. I also like to think of it as covering up their sign. So if it has a negative sign, cover them up, see which one's bigger, and then use that sign. What really makes the keep change add possible in subtraction is that we are adding the additive inverse. You've already looked at the additive inverse a little bit when we were adding our integers. The additive inverse is a property that says that negative 5 plus 5 equals 0. Or in other words, any negative number a plus the opposite of that number positive a is going to equal zero. So our additive inverse is basically summing up that our opposites are going to equal zero. Remember that word inverse means opposite. When we are adding the opposite as we saw in our previous examples we're starting with a subtraction problem. Because we are adding the additive inverse, we are going to change our subtraction to adding, and then we are going to add the opposite number that we have for our second number. In this case, since we have a negative 1 fourth, the opposite of negative 1 4 is positive 1 4. And so our problem becomes negative 3 fourths plus positive 1 fourth. 
anytime we turn our subtraction problem into an addition problem by using the additive inverse property, we can then use any of the models that we used for adding to help us solve the problem. So you can draw a number line, you could use counters, or you can just use the addition rules that we looked at in our adding integers and rational numbers lesson. Okay, Lake Hazel, that's all we have today for subtracting integers. If you have questions, make sure and ask your teacher and get those cleared up and we'll see you next time.